So this is about the depth of the two by four wall. As you can see, it's it's significant. There's significant depth outside of that. You know, we just need that space to place that uh, that additional insulation, and uh, that's that's going to save save the, a a big part of uh, the energy that uh, uh, goes a long way to making this building passive house. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. This week we're in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to see what could be the first certified passive house in this prairie province. Three most important principles for a passive house would be super insulation, air tightness, and, and good windows towards the south. And with that, you'll achieve a very energy efficient building. Michael Namath is the founder of Bright Buildings, an energy modeling and passive house design consulting firm. Michael met his future business collaborator, Robin Adair, who's owner of Green Builder in 2014 at a training session for passive house design. When Adair was given the opportunity to put his training to the test, he was quick to bring Namath on board. And he had already started the energy modeling and uh, passed that off to me to, to carry on with that. That's where I continued doing the energy modeling with the, the passive house software and then pr started preparing all the documentation for certification. So kind of being his uh, support on uh, the more technical side of things. But he, certainly he's, he's got so much experience with low energy buildings that we're both learning a lot. This passive house has 18 inch super insulated walls. It was so tight, it will only require about $300 worth of electricity to heat the home each year. What we've done here is we've we've gone away from natural gas altogether. There's no there's no fossil fuel coming to the building. We're using electrical energy and we're going to supplement that and perhaps maybe produce all the electrical needs with PV solar. We've seen a lot of amazing net zero home designs on green energy futures. But this passive house is like net zero on steroids. Under the home is almost a foot or 25 centimeters of insulation that protects the basement and footings. Under the footings, again, thermal bridge free, nothing, none of the concrete's touching the ground. There's 12 inches of uh, high density foam uh, underneath the footings, underneath the floor slab, another 10 inches outside the foundation wall. So that's a lot of insulation. The attic has R105 insulation in it. That's double a normal home and the walls, they clock in at R60. The main walls are, uh, well, they're 14 inches on the outside, two by four on the inside, basically around 18 inches with all the elements involved in, in the wall, 18, 18 and a half inches deep. Harold Orr of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan is considered a pioneer of the passive house concept that eventually found legs in Germany. He wrote the original software that evolved into HOT 2000. This is the software designers use today to model super energy efficient homes. He explains why all this insulation is used. A passive house is a house that uses a lot less energy than, than conventional housing. Uh, we estimate that uh, generally a passive house will use only 15% of the energy to heat it that a conventional house will use. It's like uh, the difference between a coffee maker and a thermos bottle. A coffee maker puts heat into it and keeps a coffee warm as long as you pay for the bill. You fill the thermos and the coffee will stay warm for a long period of time, even overnight. This home is so efficient, it will remain comfortable inside using only a 93% efficient heat recovery ventilator and a 2000 watt electric heater. That's the equivalent of two small hair dryers. It doesn't need a furnace. Um, it's because it's uh, so well insulated and because the energy requirements are so low, uh, we can heat with electric resistance and still only pay about $300 a year for that heating. That modest heating system provides two thirds of the home's heat, while south facing windows collect the other third from passive solar energy. At night, the super thick insulation keeps the space more than comfortable. But that's not all. Instead of flushing its warmth down the drain, this home also uses a wastewater heat recovery system. The warm shower water would be coming uh, from above heating up this copper pipe and at the same time you're running your shower 
it's bringing cold water in from, from the city. So that, so that warm shower drain water is, is being recovered by the incoming cold water. That incoming cold water is preheated as it travels up surrounding the internal pipe. Drain heat recovery can be up to 60% efficient. Namath expects to save 25% on domestic hot water heating with this version. Holly Ann Knott is the owner of this passive house duplex along with her husband Jim Spinney. The couple had an old home that wasn't worth fixing, so they decided to do something special. They talked to Robin Adair, the green builder who proposed the passive house concept. I tell my friends who say, you're building a certified passive house, what is that? And I say, well, we're not going to have a furnace. Um, and that really blows them away. For passive house pioneer Harold Orr, this project is some pretty cool hometown validation of a 40-year-old idea. For builder Robin Adair, it's the start of something he'd like to see a lot more of. As Michael Namath says, the passive house is a very good answer to the question of how to proceed in a low-carbon world. We have a need to reduce our energy use. We have commitments made at the Paris Climate Change Conference for re reducing our carbon emissions and and buildings are a third of the energy used in Canada, we can make huge strides uh, in carbon reductions through building our, our homes and our, our buildings more energy efficiently. There are certified passive homes in BC, and some have been built in New Brunswick, Ontario and Alberta, but this will be the first certified passive house in Saskatchewan. To learn more, check out our blog, photo gallery and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Passive solar design is not just for a passive house. It's become something anybody building super energy efficient homes looks at right off the top. Check out our story on how passive solar design and thermal mass can help slash your heat demand by half.